Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to finish up the first part of my series on the history of the Flat Earth. We have gone through the Greeks and their astronomical calculations, and now we're up to the Romans and the onset of Christianity. Now, the Romans made major advances in sciences, but unlike the Greeks, who I kind of describe as thoughtful observers that would contemplate the big questions, the key in Roman times was practicality. Uh, they made major advances in medicine and architecture uh, and in engineering. They pretty much adapted Greek cosmology and were very much into the astrology aspect of astronomy. But they did use astronomy to make major advances in calendars. The Julian calendar lasted for 1,500 years with relatively good accuracy. They had days of the week. They had uh, public sundials. Sundials were very popular during Roman times. Now, the other day I asked a quick question on shorts. Um, why didn't the Romans develop the steam engine? And I would encourage you to go look at that short, which is called Romans on the Moon, and see some of the very thoughtful responses that came in from the viewers. But what of the specific topic of this series, the Flat Earth? With the onset of Christianity, we began to see a force that was going to shape sciences and our view of the universe for thousands of years, right up to the present. What did the early church think of the shape of the earth? Well, St. Augustine in 400 AD summarized this in three statements. Statement number one, the Bible is silent on the shape of the earth. There is nothing in the Bible to determine that the earth has a particular shape. Number two, because the Bible is silent on the shape of the earth, a specific knowledge of the shape of the earth or cosmology is not required for salvation. And most importantly, number three, is because it is not required for salvation, let the science speak for itself and go with what the philosophers are currently saying. This is very interesting to me because much of the current flat earth movement claims a basis in religion. That does not appear to be the case. Religion does not seem to care what the shape of the earth is or what the arrangement of the solar system is. Uh, as long as you are seeking salvation and doing good works and following the uh, tenets of the Bible, they're fine with it. It seems that as far as they're concerned, a horse is a horse. It doesn't matter what color the horse is. It's still just a horse. It doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. So what was the state of science and cosmology at the um, end of the Western Roman Empire? There was widespread agreement that the Earth was very clearly a sphere. The predominant cosmology at the time was Ptolemy, which talked about a geocentric solar system of spherical planets. And this is the thought that would dominate Western thinking well into the um, 15th century. However, there was dissent. For example, uh, in the last episode, we talked about Aristarchus of Samos, who firmly believed that the Earth was in a heliocentric solar system because he measured the size of the Sun and found that it was considerably larger than that of the Earth. And it made sense to him that the smaller object would orbit the larger object. But he was a minority voice as most of philosophy and science at that time agreed with Aristotle and Ptolemy that the Earth was in a geocentric solar system. But there was common agreement that the Earth was spherical. Now this series is broken into three basic sections. The first section answers the question, what is the shape of the Earth? The second part of the series talks about the shape of the solar system, specifically the conflict between geocentricism and heliocentricism. This part to me is the most interesting, and it covers the period of history between the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the fall of the Eastern or the Byzantine Empire. These are commonly referred to as the early, the high, and the late Middle Ages. Uh, that's their proper designation. Uh, they are also called the Dark Ages, and we'll look into why they're called the Dark Ages. We're going to look at the political and religious upheavals that occurred during this time, and we're also going to look at science in the West. But more importantly, we're also going to look at science in the East. This is the Golden Age of Islam. This is the time of Al-Biruni. And although I'm quite familiar with the West and I'm quite familiar with the Golden Age of Islam, the place that I am weakest is in early Indian and Chinese astronomy and cosmology. So if any of the viewers would like to make some comments about that uh, to kind of guide my research and make this, this part of the series a little bit better, 
I would very much welcome that. I will put a post up uh, in the community section. And if you have some stuff that you want to uh, recommend or add to the discussion, I would very much like to review it. So after we lay the foundation of what is the shape of the Earth and layer on what is the shape of the solar system, we're going to look at the third question, and that is, where did the modern flat Earth come from? And that will begin in the early 19th century. So hopefully that will give you an idea of where we're going with this. I want to make this a rather comprehensive history. Uh, we're going to continue doing uh, videos as I've been doing so far, uh, taking about one week to answer each of the three questions. And then I'll put together some sort of a, a compilation, probably three videos summarizing each week. So in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. I do appreciate your support of this channel. Uh, we do have the telescope fund uh, going. I made a good payment on that this last week, and I'm looking to make another payment on it in February. If you're interested in checking out that project and maybe helping out with it, the links are right in the description. So until next time, take care, my friends.